Hello all, I am Arya Vijayan, I am an assistant professor from the Department of Cardiovascular Technology, Yenapoya School of Allied Health Sciences. Today we will be studying two different electrocardiographic syndromes. So what are they? First one is WPW syndrome. It is Wolf Parkinson's White syndrome and the next one is Lone Gano Levine syndrome. It is commonly known as LGL syndrome. So, we will be studying on two different ECG diseases. What is ECG? Electrocardiographic syndromes. LGL syndrome and WPW syndrome. So, before getting to the class, we can go through the specific learning objective. So, at the end of this session, students will be able to define the condition and explain the mechanism of WPW syndrome. And students will be able to enumerate the classic ECG findings in WPW syndrome and to enumerate the types of accessory pathways then to list out the signs and symptoms and the complication of the WPW syndrome and finally to define LGL syndrome and describe the ECG findings of the same. So what is WPW syndrome? How can we define this ECG syndrome? So as we all know what is ECG? Electrocardiography. It is a graphical representation of electrical activity of the heart. Okay. So the Wolf Parkinson's White syndrome is an electrocardiographic syndrome which is characterized by an anomalous atrioventricular conduction pathway. So we all have studied about the conduction system, right? So what is conduction system? It consists of some specialized cell which has special property of conducting impulses. So additional to this conduction system, if the patient is uh, containing any anomalous accessory pathway that is known as WPW syndrome. So it is often congenital in origin. So what is congenital? The diseases that are present by birth. So the AV node serves an important function. So in the conduction system, this atrioventricular node has important function. It limits the activity, electrical activity that reaches the ventricles. So what happens when uh, impulses are generated from the sinoatrial node, SA node, which is also known as the natural pacemaker of the heart, it travels down to the AV node. After that, through the bundle of his, it divided into two bundle branches, left bundle branch and right bundle branch. Then finally, it reaches to the Purkin J fibers, then it will result in the depolarization of the ventricle that is also known as contraction of the ventricle. So what is the role of atrioventricular node in uh, conduction? It limits the electrical activity that reaches the ventricle. So. Uh, impulses are generated from the SA node, it is traveling down to the AV node, it slow down the conduction. So it slow down the conduction, after that only impulses are reaching to the ventricle. So individuals with WPW have an accessory pathway that communicates between the atria and ventricle in addition to the AV node. So this WPW syndrome, syndromic patients will have this additional abnormal accessory pathway other than AV node. So this pathway forms a bypass which enables the supraventricular impulse to bypass the AV node, bundle of his and distal conducting system and so activate or pre-excite the ventricle. So what happens in WPW syndromic patients? So these impulses are generated from the SA node. It is directly uh, going to the accessory pathway. It is not going to the AV node. It bypasses the AV node and it bypasses all the distal conducting system. It is directly reaching to the myocardium of the ventricle. So what happens to the excitation of ventricle? These impulses pre-excite the ventricle. It is ventricular depolarization is happening very early. So an individual could have more than one accessory pathway. Then the common anomalous bypass is known as the bundle of Kent. So which accessory pathway is responsible for WPW syndrome? It is bundle of Kent. Other than bundle of Kent, there are many other accessory uh, pathways exist. 
So this accessory pathway does not share the rate slowing properties of the AV node and it may conduct electrical activity at a significantly higher rate than the AV node. As I told, this accessory pathways does not possess that special properties of AV node. What is that? It can delay, it can slow down the conduction from the atria to ventricle. So as a result, what happens? Heart rate will be higher. So it, uh, it excites the ventricle at a significantly higher rate. So here the normal conduction system depicted as in yellow color and one which is in white color is the anomalous accessory pathway. Same, see it bypasses the impulses are bypassing the AV node and the distal conducting system it is directly reaching to the ventricle. So what can we see in ECG? What are the abnormal electrocardiographic presentation in WPW syndromic patient? So there will be a short PR interval. So that is the first classic findings of WPW syndrome. What can we see? A short PR interval. How can we measure PR interval from the beginning of the P wave to the beginning of the QRS complex, right? So what is that? It's a time taken for the impulse to reach from atria to the AV node, SA node to the AV node. So, since it pre excites the ventricle, it will show as a short PR interval. And after that, a slurred, thickened initial upstroke of the QRS complex, which is termed as delta wave. So, in the QRS complex, at the beginning, in the upstroke, we will see what a slurred, thickened initial upstroke that is known as delta wave. So these are the two important electrocardiographic presentations in WPW syndrome patients. What are the short PR interval? A delta wave, then a relatively normal narrow terminal QRS deflection. So QRS terminal QRS deflection will be normal. There will be slight widening of the QRS complex as a whole. So when we consider the QRS complex as a whole, we can see a slight widening. Then there will be secondary ST segment and T wave changes. So we can see the P wave QRS and T wave. So P wave is normal since the atrial excitation is happening normally. After that, we can see the PR interval from the P wave to the beginning of the QRS complex. That interval is very short. That is known as what? Short PR interval. Then we can see the initial slurred upstroke in the QRS complex that is termed as delta wave. So as we can see, the terminal deflection is normal in the QRS complex. We will show one more example same we can see the uh, initial abnormal upstroke slurring delta wave and a very short PR interval same here the presence of delta wave in the initial upstroke and the short PR interval so what is responsible for the WPW syndrome the anomalous additional accessory pathway which is bundle of Kent so it's a thin filamentous structure which may be situated ectopically anywhere along the atrioventricular ring that is the fibrous junction separating the atria from the ventricle. So where it locates it is in the fibrous junction between the atria and ventricle the atrioventricular ring. So what are the signs and symptoms? So people with WPW syndrome are usually asymptomatic. They will not show any symptoms. However, the individual may experience palpitation, dizziness, shortness of breath, syncope and sweating. So as I told before, uh, heart rate is very high in WPW syndrome when compared with the normal individual. Because of that, it might affect the cardiac output and it might affect the, it will have an impact on the systemic perfusion which will lead to dizziness, shortness of breath, syncope and sweating. So there are two types of WPW syndrome. It is based on the location of the pathway. So this pathway may communicate between the left atrium and the left ventricle in which case it is termed as type A 
pre excitation so it can locate anywhere so if it is between left atrium and left ventricle it is termed as type a pre excitation whereas uh, if it is between right atrium and right ventricle it is termed as type b pre excitation the problems arise when this pathway creates an electrical circuit that bypasses the av node when an aberrant electrical connection is made via the bundle of kent tachy arrhythmias occur as a result so it will finally it will result in tachy arrhythmias so now we will discuss about the mechanism of the wpw syndrome so the cardiac activation in wpw syndrome take place in a sequential phases there are three different phases phase 1 is atrial activation phase 2 ventricular pre excitation phase 3 terminal ventricular activation so in atrial activation the impulse leaves the sa node and that activates the atria so it occurs normally from sa node impulses are arising or generating it travels down to the av node so what happens as a result atrial contraction occurs normally so this phase is reflected electrocardiographically by the normal p wave so p wave will be normal in wpw syndrome patients there is nothing wrong with the p wave because atrial activation occurs normally now ventricular pre excitation so ventricular activation occurs through both normal and anomalous pathways so the anomalous bypass does not possess the inherent anatomical and physiological properties of av node which results in the normal av nodal conduction delay so here once it leaves from the sa node it can either go through the anomalous pathway or the normal av node so the sinus impulse is consequently conducted at a relatively rapid rate through the anomalous pathway so as i told before the conduction through the anomalous pathway will be at a higher significantly higher rate than a normal individual so the rapid conduction through the anomalous bypass enables the ventricle to be activated or pre excited relatively early so this is reflected electrocardiographically by the short pr interval so what is causing this short pr interval here the impulses are traveling through the anomalous bypass uh, anomalous conduction pathway and it reaches to the ventricle relatively early it relatively pre excites the ventricle that's why pr interval is short in wpw syndrome patients so once the impulse which has been conducted through the anomalous bypass reaches the ventricle the activation of the ventricles occurs through ordinary myocardial tissue so it bypasses the conduction system it is traveling through the accessory pathway and then it is reaching where it is reaching to the normal ordinary myocardial tissue so this is a poor and slow conducting medium when compared with the highly specialized conducting system of the bundle branches and a terminal purkinje fibers so when compared with the other components of conduction system myocardium ventricular myocardium is a very poor slow conducting medium so the pre excitation is therefore slow and bizarre that's why pre excitation is slow and bizarre in ventricular activation of wpw syndromic patient so the pre excitation is represented electrocardiographically by the slowly inscribed and bizarre delta wave so what is causing this delta wave when compared with the normal conduction system components myocardium cells ventricular myocardium conducts the impulses very slowly so that results in the bizarre delta wave now terminal ventricular activation so the activation which has been conducted through the av nodal pathway with the normal physiological delay reaches the ventricle further onwards conduction and activation of the ventricle is through the normal conduction system so at the same time through the normal conduction system that is through the av node bundle of his and bundle branches and the purkinje fibers the normal impulses are reaching to the ventricle 
and it excites the ventricle normally. So the ventricular activation is therefore completed rapidly. That's why the terminal complex, terminal deflection of the QRS complex is normal in WPW center patients. So this normally conducted activation catches up with the pre-excitation and it completes ventricular activation in a near normal manner. So hence the relatively normal narrow terminal deflection of the QRS complex. So the classic presentation of a WPW syndrome is thus a form of fusion complex. It consists of two parts. A complex resulting from a part activation of the ventricles by the impulse conducted through the anomalous pathway and part activation of the ventricles by the impulse conducted through the normal pathway. So the initial upstroke, the initial part of the QRS complex results from what? From the abnormal conduction through the anomalous pathway and the terminal uh, complexes results of what? It is through the normal conduction system. So it is a fusion complex. So the accessory conduction pathway fibers other than the Kent fibers. Other than bundle of Kent, we have Mahim fibers. So what is the origin of Mahim fiber? It is just distal to the AV node. So it situates between the bundle of his and ventricles. That's why it is known as hiso ventricular and it ends in the ventricular myocardium. So just distal to the AV node from the bundle of his it starts and it ends in the ventricular myocardium. So ECG will show normal PR interval. Why? Because it does not bypass the AV node. So it will result as normal PR interval but through the uh, anomalous pathway conduction is can I cut? Mm? Okay. So ECG will show normal PR interval and delta waves. So the impulse does not bypass the AV node. After AV node what happens? It bypasses the bundle of his and bundle branches and it reaches to the ventricle. So as a result we can see a normal PR interval and delta wave. So in Mahim fibers, PR interval will be normal and there will be presence of delta waves. Next fiber is James fiber. So what is the origin? Where is the origin of the James fiber? It is from the atria. So it is located between atria and bundle of his. That's why it is known as atrio his. And in James fiber, impulses can bypass the AV node. So what can we see in ECG? We can see a short PR interval, but it ends in the bundle of his. So the conduction through the ventricles occur normally. As a result, we can see normal QRS. There will not be any delta wave. So in Mahim fibers, PR interval is normal, but it is characterized by the presence of delta wave. Whereas in James fiber, we can see a short PR interval, but the QRS complex is normal. So what are the complications of WPW syndrome? Tachyarrhythmia, obviously heart rate will be more, syncopal attacks, sudden cardiac death, complications associated with invasive procedures and surgery, and complications associated with drug therapy and treatment medication we can give antiarrhythmic therapy and next one is ablation what is ablation so what is causing this abnormal ecg findings in wpw syndrome the anomalous accessory pathway so by applying extreme heat or cold materials we can burn the accessory pathway. So that procedure is known as ablation, then cardioversion. So this is all about WPW syndrome. So it is characterized by the anomalous additional accessory pathway, which is bundle of Kent. So next we will be discussing about the lone Ganon Levine syndrome. It is also known as LGL syndrome. So the accessory pathway here is James fiber. 
it is intranodal. So the accessory pathway bypasses the delay within the AV node. So all ventricular conduction occurs through the usual ventricular conduction pathway. So here in James fiber, impulses will bypass the AV node. It is going through the anomalous accessory pathway to the ventricle. Unlike WPW syndrome, there is no region of ventricular myocardium that is depolarized independently of the rest of the ventricle. Therefore, there is no delta wave and the QRS complex is not widened. So, it is only characterized by the presence of short PR interval as it is bypasses the AV node. The only electrical manifestation of the LGL is shortening of the PR interval as a result of the accessory pathway bypassing the delay within the AV node. So, there is no delta wave. So, what are the ECG criteria? We will just list out the ECG criteria. There will be shortened PR interval less than 0.12 second and there is no delta wave. The QRS complex is not widened. So, we can see a short PR interval and the QRS complex is normal. There is no delta wave. There is no initial slurring upstroke of the QRS complex. So, the WPW syndrome is a, it's characterized by an anomalous atrioventricular conduction and then what are the classic ECG presentation? Short PR interval and the presence of delta wave. And the only electrical manifestation of LGL is shortening of the PR interval. There is no presence of delta wave in LGL syndrome. So, for reference, you can refer these two textbooks. One is Introduction to Electrocardiography by Shambro and uh, Goldberger's cl Clinical Electrocardiography by Goldberger. Thank you.